Do you have a copy of Windows XP software laying around that you would like to run but don't have an older PC to run it on? Well, you can go back in time by installing your copy of WinXP into VirtualBox. Then you can install any legacy software on your Wayback XP Virtual Machine. This video demonstrates how to install Windows XP into VirtualBox. Outcomes or what you should be able to do after watching the video. Install Windows XP in VirtualBox and then install VirtualBox Guest Editions. Requirements VirtualBox installed on a Windows, Mac or Linux computer, a Windows XP installed disk or ISO file, and a Windows XP product key. One caveat I'd like to point out is that if you have a legal Win XP install disk that requires online or phone activation, it may be a struggle to get Microsoft to activate it. The next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am in the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to create a new virtual machine, a Win XP 32-bit virtual machine so that I can run some legacy software. In order to do that, I would go to Machine, New, and in this window, first thing it asks is the name, Win XP 32 Base. I call it Base because I'm going to take some snapshots of it, maybe, and store it in a folder, Win XP folder here and WinXP32 base, this folder right here. Click on it and select folder. So now it says Microsoft Windows for type and Windows XP32 bit. Okay, click on next. Recommended memory size is 192 megabytes. I'm gonna give it a lot of memory. I think a Windows 32 bit machine can access up to four gigabytes of memory, but I'm not going to go that far because there may be some used locked out or you can't really go up that high for some reason or another. But So I'm going to give it about 3 gigabytes of memory. 3072. And then click Next. We'll create a virtual hard disk. I'm going to click Create. Just take the default there. Now I'm going to have it dynamically allocated. And that's because it only takes up as much storage on the host machine hard disk as there is on the virtual machine storage. Click Next. And I'm going to choose about 40 gigabytes. It's not going to take out 40 gigabytes on the host machine unless I really fill it up. But that way, if I want to play around with some legacy software and a little bit extra storage there, so I don't have to play around with VirtualBox and get that expanded, because that is a little bit tricky to do. Click Create. So here I am in this machine. Got it started. So let's go up to General. We've got this information. I'm going to click over here in Advanced. Now one thing I'm going to do is allow bidirectional on the shared clipboard and bidirectional on the drag and drop. Now one thing I will point out is these are a little bit of a security risk, but I'm not going to let this WinXP machine run wild, and I really don't want it facing the internet, just running the legacy software, and maybe go to a website I've already made sure is okay. But this will make it easier if I want to copy something from the host to the virtual or from the virtual to the host. Click OK. Go to System, Base Memory, 3072, Processor. I want to make sure I'm at one CPU. I don't think that 32-bit Windows machine is going to run more than one CPU. I could be wrong on that, but it's been a long time, over 20 years since I played around with XP. Click OK. 
display. I like to take it all the way up to the highest value it will go. That should be okay. And then VBOX VGA, the default setting is good for XP. Click OK. Storage. Now here we've got the uh, storage, the hard disk or the disk. Now I'm going to have to fill this up right here. And in my case, I've got a CD, an old Windows XP CD that I'm going to load into this virtual machine. And so I'm going to click right here. You could have an ISO file, and I've chosen host drive E because I have a CD-ROM drive on this computer, and that's where the uh, Windows XP install disk is. So that'll be okay. Network should be default, NAT, Enable Network Adapter, and click OK. So that's pretty much it for setting up the Windows XP. Next step is to install Windows XP into this virtual machine. In this section, I'm going to install Windows XP from the host CD-ROM drive. Now, if you recall, it will take a long time to install, but I'll only show the screens where you have to go make a decision. I'll skip over some of the screens so you won't be watching a two-hour video here or actually about a 45 or an hour video. So I'm going to go up to WinXP32 Base, right-click, Start, Normal Start, and here it comes. It's going to bounce around a bit, see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Right here it says Windows Setup. And the uh, CD-ROM is running on the host machine. After almost five minutes of recording, it says, Welcome to Setup. Now, one thing I want to caution you, if you're trying to install Windows XP Service Pack 2 64-bit, I do know that Windows, it will have to activate it. And when you go to the Internet to activate it, you'll find that, well, Windows has forgot about activating old copies of Windows 64-bit Service Pack 2. But this one will be okay as far as getting it running. So now it asks me to enter, repair, or F3 quit. I'm going to hit enter. F8, I agree. You've got your whole license and page down. You, I don't know how many pages it is. I'm not going to go through that. I'm just going to click F8, I agree. And there's unpartitioned space. Enter install. Or if you want to create more than one partition, just says C. Click Enter to install. And it says Format the partition using the NTFS file system quick. Or Format the partition uses the NTFS file system. I'm going to use the quick method. So I'm just going to be running some legacy software. I know my disk is clean because that's how VirtualBox presents it to you. And there's nothing on it. It's just a clean 40 gigabyte disk, but it's not taking up 40 gigabytes on the uh, host machine. Hit Enter, and away we go. Here we have set up copying files. Here we have the computer rebooting. It will reboot in eight, seven, six, etc., etc. seconds. Do not press any key to boot from CD. Here I am. I have been recording for about 12 minutes. Let me see if I can expand this and get a little bit bigger. Nope, not really. Currently installing Windows. You'll see setup will complete in approximately 37, 36 minutes. Now, here comes the screen. You've got to make a decision, regional and language options. I'm going to accept the default, which is U.S. keyboard layout and U.S. English. Oh, the standards and format setting is set to English, United States, and the location is set to United States. If you're someplace else, you can customize it and see what the heck all the choices are. I'm not going to go into that. Since I'm not going to do any changes, I simply click on Next. I ask you to type your full name and a company or organization. I want to type a name. And I know that if you leave the company or organization 
blank. It will accept that. I remember that from when I was running a lot of Windows machines for my students. Click Next. Product Key. Here I am not going to demonstrate typing in the product key. Hopefully you've still got a product key laying around. I do. So I'm going to use that. But this section of the video is going to be skipped over. And you'll see the next screen afterwards. Hopefully your product key has been entered correctly. Otherwise you'll see a screen saying, whoops, wrong product key. And let me give the computer a name. Win XP. 32 base. Everything will be in capital letters here automatically. And I'm going to give it an administrator password. Interestingly enough, WinXP did not ask for a user name and password to log on as a standard setting. That was not the default setting on XP, but administrator password, go ahead and make sure that you have one. Just in case, click next. Date and time, or in my case, it's January 5th, 23. Whoa, that's a long time since XP came out. And I'm in the Eastern Time Zone of the United States, U.S. and Canada. Automatically just clock for daylight savings changes. I'm going to leave it to that and go on to next. There are, I think, some laws have changed or rules have changed for daylight savings. I'm going to leave it on typical settings. You can play around with this if you want, but this is a basic install. Click Next. I'm going to just accept the default. Just leave it called Work Group. Computer is not on a network, or basically that means that you're not in a domain. And click Next. It has now been 18 minutes since I started recording. So we're going to go on for a while and then come back. So right now it's finalizing initialization. It has been 23 minutes since I started recording. And it says setup will complete in approximately 8 minutes. Currently it is restarting. Do not press any key here. To improve the appearance of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust your screen resolution. I will click OK. And Windows adjusted your screen resolution. If you can read this text, click OK to continue. Click OK. And it's been 25 minutes since I started the install. And now it asks you to go through a series of screens. To continue, click Next. It says, thank you for purchasing XP. And I'm just going to click Next. It's checking the network and yes, this computer will connect through a local area network or home network. Or no, this computer will connect only to the internet. I'm just having it connect to the local area network and click Next. Are you ready to register online with Microsoft? Well, I think this is kind of a joke because I don't think you can register XP anymore. And so I'll go click No, not at this time. Next. And I won't put in my name here again, Mike. Spell it correctly. Uh, you can do whatever you want here, but you can add people later on. Click Next. Congratulations, you're ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to click Finish. You can go over all the screens a little bit slower. Okay. Here we have Windows XP, and it's installed. Now you notice the screen is very small, but once I install, insert guest edition CD image, then we'll get the screen a lot bigger. So now it's been about 27 minutes since I started the install. In the next section, I'm gonna 
show you how to insert the guest edition CD image and get the screen in a much more nicer fashion. In this section, I'm going to install the uh, guest editions CD or guest editions to this virtual machine and we'll get the uh, machine sized up a little bit larger. So I go over here to devices, insert guest edition CD image. Once I've inserted the CD image, I simply go to my computer and you've got your local disk C and then you see this VBox guest editions. We'll click on that, maybe double click. It opens up. It says, Welcome to Oracle VM VirtualBox Guest Edition 61.1.40 setup. Click Next. I'm just going to accept the default. Next. Well, I'll just leave it. Start menu entries. No big thing. Install and let it run. Software you're installing has not passed Windows logo testing. I don't think so. It's going to go through this a couple of times. I'm just going to hit continue anyway. Again, continue anyway. Again, has not passed Windows logo testing. Continue anyway. And finish. Now once it's finished, it's going to restart Windows XP. When it comes back up, we'll enlarge the screen. Here it's come back up. I've expanded a little ways. It's, I don't know, I think this is just gets a little tricky at times. It'll only go a little bit at a time. I could go to display settings on the machine. I can go up here to view, virtual screen one, and set it to 124 by 768. And, but I play with it a little bit at a time. There we go. And a little bit down here. And a little bit more up here. So I play around with it. I'm sure there's a way to do it more simpler and quicker, but I'm not going to hunt it down because this is Windows XP. Once its legacy setting is done, it's set. It's ready to go. It's going to come back to this setting once you restart it. And I'll just show you that. I'll just go to uh, turn off computer. Restart. And then after this comes back up, you can start installing any legacy software you want. Now, there is a legacy mode to install even older software than what works in XP. So now Windows XP has restarted. I'm going to leave it up to you to install your legacy software because all the legacy software is going to have a little bit different and Windows XP also has a compatibility mode that uh, I've even used with WordPerfect. So, good luck with this. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions on this video, please ask them in the comments below. Also, if there is a video you would like to see made, please let me know. While I can't promise anything, I will try and look into it. Cheers.